Time now for today's All-Star Reunion Blowout. Remember this classic theme song. It's so hard to believe that it's been 30 years since the start of St. Elsewhere, and we teamed up with our friends at Entertainment Weekly to bring the cast together. ABC's John Quinones got the honors. He's here to tell us about it. Hey, John. Thank you, George. You know, before Grey's Anatomy, before ER, there was St. Elsewhere, a medical show that reinvented the genre, dealing with controversial and surprising topics and showing doctors as flawed and all too real. I've been in ER just as long as you have. I've been knocked around down there. I didn't go out and buy a gun. <laughs> I'm scared. It was critically acclaimed, but ratings challenged. Tell me this chaos will end. This chaos will end. For six seasons, devoted fans of St. Elsewhere followed the lives and loves inside a dingy South Boston hospital. We spend so much time in this place dealing with all kinds of sadness. When you get a chance like this to celebrate a new life, it becomes even more cherished. More people died there than in any hospital. I think in the history of but television. But it was an actual hospital, right? <laughs> we didn't save a lot of people. In the first hospital show, even the stars of our show had a tendency to die off and get killed. We couldn't even save ourselves, let alone patients. St. Elijah's Hospital was staffed with a slew of now familiar faces. Ed Begley Jr., Howie Mandel, Mark Harmon, and David Morse were just a part of a large, ever-changing ensemble. You give your patients the wrong antibiotics. You don't know what medications they're on. You write the worst progress notes. You're pathetic. And yes, this is a young and back then relatively unknown Denzel Washington. To this day, he will call me from the set and go, Howie, how would you play this? <laughs> Denzel couldn't make it. But 30 years after it first went on the air, 12 of St. Elsewhere's cast gathered for an Entertainment Weekly cover shoot to celebrate the show. We had a great feeling that we were special, which we were. The show was special. It was unique. Who was the class clown behind Howard. the scenes? <laughs> Was it always? Really? Yes. I went on vacation one time and I came home and I, there was a for sale sign in front of my house. <laughs> he had listed my house with Century 21 yeah. while I was away. I wasn't going to take the first offer. <laughs> was this the best thing that happened in your careers? Maybe one of the most extraordinary things to happen in some of our careers because it was really a Absolutely. show. Absolutely. It was a show that changed television in a lot of ways. Yeah. And to be a part of something like that was Certainly extraordinary. In order for me to be a good doctor, I've got to separate my feelings from myself. Mark, what did you learn from your acting on this show that you draw upon now? All of a sudden, we all had better words to say, teachers in every direction. I was real thankful to be included in this group. Did people on the streets, would they come up to you and ask you for medical advice? I opened a hospital in the Midwest because I was a nurse on television. I would find I would be giving, dispensing advice a lot of the time. And actually, I wasn't, wasn't far off a lot of the time. William Daniels played the surly Dr. Craig, and his real-life wife, Bonnie Bartlett, played his TV wife. Oh, it was wonderful. We love to work together. Right, Bill? Right, Bill? <laughs> right, Bill? Right? Uh, well, well, give me a second, will you? <laughs> what is it in my personality that bugs people? You're really a closed, narrow-minded, judgmental human being. How would you describe Dr. Mark Craig? Uh, he was me. Mm -hmm. I just played me. Arrogant? Big ego? Self-centered? Well, not, let's not go too far with this. <laughs> In everyone's hearts this day, beloved executive producer Bruce Paltrow, yes, Gwyneth's father, who passed away in 2002. I started directing in the second season, and Bruce Paltrow was the reason for that. And he was aware of the fact that women and minorities were not in the DGA. And he gave quite a few people an opportunity before it was fashionable. Follow me. The writers never shied away from controversy. Main characters were written off in shocking ways. And that included Mark Harmon's popular Dr. Bobby Caldwell. I've got AIDS. Your character on the show contracted HIV. Better talk to the writers, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Up until then, that hadn't happened much on television. At all. At all. At all. That was groundbreaking television. But in between all the drama, there were also a lot of laughs. We were irreverent. We were ironic. We were sometimes silly. What's his problem? He's got a few bruised ribs and he needs a tune-up.
Today, the show is best remembered for two things. It's infinitely hummable theme song. He sits there all day long in his own world, staring at that toy. And having one of the most controversial finales ever. The last few minutes suggesting that the entire series had been the musings of an autistic boy seen staring at a snow globe. Can I just say that this interview is not actually happening? It's all happening in Chad's head. Chad Allen played that little boy. Funny you should mention that right here. <laughs> Who knows what the writers really intended? In fact, maybe this interview is also merely a daydream. Maybe. Said Elsewhere lasted six seasons, and yet it never ranked above 49th place. Seriously? Yeah. But it was the critics' darling nominated for an astonishing 63 Emmy Awards. 63 Emmy yeah. Awards, and all those familiar faces, but it was so great to see Denzel yeah. there of in that as well. And Howie. So Howie, I forgot about him. <laughs> I mean, really, the success of that show made ensemble dramas work. It they was, made them viable on television. It was on, one on of the television. first times that that, that um, but they had ensembles and that everybody was really featured. I mean, yeah. and now Mark Harmon is on CSI. Yeah, and <laughs> <laughs> yeah they're all working. <laughs> and you're right, that's <laughs> not one of the 40 of them. One of them. No, <laughs> NCIS, one of the letters. One of them. There's letters. A C is in there. A C is in there.